Currently, by the end of July, the Biden administration has confirmed 140 judges. But unfortunately, at this same point, under the third year of the Trump administration, they'd done 144. And that's because they utilized the time at the end of July and then kept going in August recess, which is what the Senate should have done. So it's unfortunate, but they have fallen behind the Trump administration numbers. Hi, I'm Russ Feingold. I'm president of the American Constitution Society, and we need to talk about judges. Courts matter a great deal. And, you know, a couple years ago, if you'd said to people courts matter, they would have said, well, yeah, so do the Green Bay Packers. But now, after they've seen the tremendous damage that's been done by the United States Supreme Court, women's reproductive rights, to affirmative action, to voting rights, people get it. And it's because the United States Supreme Court can determine great aspects of our rights and our personal liberties, but also individual judges, individual federal court judges can make a real difference and cause real damage, uh, as the judge did in Texas when he tried to stop the uh, abortion pill option. Well, really extremely well for the first two years, where uh, there are now some 140 new federal judges, lifetime federal judges appointed by President Biden. And in fact, uh, the diversity of these appointments is astounding. It's historic. You have a complete reversal from the Trump idea of mostly white males, something like 70 to 75 percent were white males. Under President Biden's confirmed judges, 67 percent are women and 67 percent are people of color. This is a very important down payment on making the federal judiciary finally begin to look like the entirety of the American people and not just uh, the, the white people in this country. Well, it had been good for a long time. The problem is, though, that it tended to be what might be called the low-hanging fruit. In other words, uh, easier places where Democratic senators were involved and couldn't and wouldn't object. But now uh, the challenge is, is becoming greater because the Trump people and McConnell were willing to stay in for the August recess in the third year of his term. And uh, unfortunately, Trump's numbers are finally going to surpass uh, the, the numbers that Biden has been able to do at, at this point. That can be reversed. But unfortunately, this nice lead they had has evaporated, and that's regrettable. Well, when you have a president who is willing to turn over his nomination role, as Trump did, to the far right and appoint ideologues, many of whom were not even a, given a positive rating in terms of being qualified by the American Bar Association, and when you realize that any one of these judges, like this judge in Texas, can roil the whole system and do great damage to people's rights on their own, you realize that every judgeship matters, and it also means it's very important to begin to reverse the damage that will be done by the fact that many of these young judges that were put in place by Trump are ideologues and are going to be there for a very long time. Oh, it's definitely doable. It depends on the commitment of the White House to make enough appointments, which they are trying to do. The Senate can't do anything if they don't have the appointment. But the Senate also has to devote real time, both in the Senate Judiciary Committee and on the floor of the Senate, to actually approving people. They've shown they've been able to do this in recent weeks in certain cases, but that means making sure they expand the calendar. That means being in session more, longer weeks and more weeks, including all the way down uh, to the beginning of next year and then even into the election year. The goal here should be to surpass the Trump numbers for four years, 234. That can be done, but they can even exceed the 187 in the third year uh, if a real effort is made. And it should be done because you're not going to pass a lot of legislation with what the House is doing in its situation. So this is a valuable and useful thing to do this year. Well, they got to get rid of these so-called blue slips that uh, allow certain senators to block nominees who are perfectly well qualified. The Republicans got rid of the blue slips when they were in charge of the Court of Appeals. Now Senator Durbin has the ability as chairman of the Judiciary Committee to get rid of this ridiculous old rule by simply saying he's done with it. He has that power as chairman. They also can streamline the process in the floor of the Senate by getting rid of the what's called post-cloture debate time. What that basically means is there's already plenty of votes for somebody. Everybody knows the person's proved, but if they can eat up all kinds of time with sort of a mini filibuster afterward, that means you're going to have less people approved overall. Because in the Senate, really, it's time more than money that matters when you get into the legislative session.
They certainly will be, whatever happens. He has an opportunity here to have one of the most historic administrations ever, probably the most historic with regard to diversity, but also in terms of changing the face of, of the judiciary to reverse the damage done by the far right uh, under the work of Trump and McConnell. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the great legacy that Jimmy Carter has with regard to judges, uh, where he may not be known for certain things, but one thing he got done during his four years was doing things that were historic with regard to a progressive and a diverse judiciary.